Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're continuing our series of discussions on ham radio and APRS specifically. So in our previous video we showed how to decode APRS packets using a radio and a laptop running direwolf. This allowed us to log packets uh, and information on the computer and then analyze it after the fact. So for example we could plot the locations of all the packets we received and also parse information that is transmitted in the packets such as like the temperature or battery voltage at the APRS transmitter. Now while this was great it was done in an offline fashion in the sense that we parsed the log file after it was created. So today what I want to do is show how to use a program called Pinpoint APRS to visualize the decoded packets in real time in an online fashion. So if that sounds like fun let's jump over to the computer and get started. All right, like any other software in this day and age, the way to get it is go to Google and then type in Pinpoint APRS. And uh, here it is, first hit, Pinpoint APRS. So this is really all you need to do. Just go to the website and uh, click on download and download. And yeah, this is a great uh, free set of software. So maybe, yeah, I will also encourage, yeah, please donate if you're uh, <laughs> if you end up liking it. So that downloaded pretty quickly. So let's go and take a look at this. Here it is. Let's go ahead and unzip it. I'll extract everything to this location. All right. And uh, whoops, there it is. Yep. Let me open the folder. Here it is. So let's just go ahead and run the setup. And uh, it'll guide us through getting this installed on our machine. So let's just go ahead and click next. Yeah, I think the the normal location is fine to install. Let's go ahead and click next, next, and it's going to install. And we'll give this a few minutes to complete, and then we'll be back. All right, it looks like it has installed. So let me go ahead and hit close, and I will kill all of this. Okay, so let's fire it up. All right, so to fire it up, let's just go here uh, to the start menu and look for pinpoint APRS. There it is. So let's go ahead and launch it. And I think the first time you're going to have to accept some user agreements. Um, okay, yes, this is all information that we can get later. So let's just click OK. And here we are. So uh, a couple things that we can do. We're going to have to set up some options. Tell you what, let me close this and I'll show you how to get to this from the normal menu. So um, I'll hit OK. Oh, actually, I guess we're gonna, they're going to make me put in my call sign first. So let's put in the call sign um, for myself. So I am KG7QEC. Uh, OK, that sounds good. I think we can leave everything else um, for our station icon. I guess you can go ahead and type this in or search for it. Or I think you can just type in what you want. I think I would like, uh, I'm trying to remember, what was the balloon? Was it O? Whoops. Sorry, I gotta hit enter. Nope, that was not it. Uh, there, no, capital O. Okay, yeah, a balloon. Um, because I'm gonna be using this for a weather balloon, so this is what I want to use. So, get my icon, and alright, so now, let me see if I can go ahead and hit OK there. Okay, it hits OK, that now runs. And, uh, yeah, we get the pretty much the standard interface. So it says it's current, so that's great. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And uh, here we are. So the uh, main display here is the map. So if we just kind of do your standard mouse scroll, you can zoom out. And one of the first things we're going to want to do is set the location of where we are. So right now, for some reason, it's, it's here in Denver-ish. So I'm over here kind of in the Seattle region. Tell you what. Let me just put a, a point, and I'll just say I'm right here in Seattle. So I'm going to actually hold shift down and then click, and then I'll select set as my position, and that green marker will move. So great, we've got our position set. Now let me show you how to get back to that option screen, because we're going to have to fill out a couple more things. So to do that, come up here to Tools and options and like you can see here this is what we were playing around with later so you can obviously put in your call sign um and then uh anything else that you might want to add like your icon and that sort of information let's leave the rest of this uh as is okay now a couple other things let's keep working our way through these tabs so the next tab we're going to look at here is the uh tnc tab 
All right, so in terms of what TNC or terminal node controller type we want to use, let's just hit this drop down menu. And for this purpose, we are going to use this serial kiss mode for keep it simple something mode. <laughs> so let's select that. Um, let's leave this unchecked. I'll show you how to manually uh, connect. I, I, I like manual control because then I know what's going on. Let's leave most of these other things standard. And down here where it says network kiss TNC settings, let's leave the TCP IP to your local host or your loopback IP address of 127.0.0.1 because eventually what we're going to want to be doing is running direwolf on this exact same machine, have direwolf do the decoding of the APRS packets, and then have direwolf publish it via this kiss net this KISS uh, terminal type, and then pinpoint APRS will be able to listen to it at this IP address and also over this port, so port 8001. Now, just to double check what we should do is let's fire up where we put Direwolf. So I just put it here in my temp. So again, remember in our previous video, we talked about getting Direwolf installed and configured and all that stuff. So this is hopefully familiar if you've already watched the other video and you know that everything in direwolf was, conf was configured in this direwolf.conf file our configuration file so let me open this up and drag it off to the side and again this text file or this .conf file talks about how we're going to set up and configure direwolf so if you scroll down in our previous video i think we left most of this standard we didn't really change much but if you scroll down far enough let me see where is it Right, here it is, TNC server properties. So look at this, the KISS port is normally set up on Direwolf to be on port 8001, which is perfect because that matches with this port 8001 over here in uh, Pinpoint APRS. So that means uh, we should be all set up. Direwolf should be publishing to the local host over this same port, and then Pinpoint APRS will be listening over that port, so everything should hook up. Okay, so that's great for the TNC tab. Let's move over now to the GPS tab. All right, so in the GPS tab, we really can leave all of this pretty standard. I do just want to call out to you that this initial position, right, the initial latitude and longitude, that is what we had set over here with this green marker using the shift and click on the map. And as you can even see, it tells you right here how to go about doing this. I guess you can enter your altitude if you really want to. Um, I'll leave it here as zero, but uh, you can see... 47 degrees north and negative 122 degrees, or I guess 122 degrees west. That's about the lat longitude of this marker here in Seattle, and you can see it updates in this tab. So really not a ton to do here because we already set the initial position um, in the map earlier. Okay, so moving on, let's take a look at the map tab. All right, so on the map tab, uh, again, there's not a lot that we need to modify from the standard default settings. The only thing I will call out is you can choose different map providers. So you can use Google Maps. Um, this hi Google hybrid map is kind of cool. Um, this shows you a little bit of terrain. So again, pick whichever map provider you would like, and you can change these if you want. But really, um, I think standard default settings work well. Okay, let's move on to this APRS IS tab. So for now, let's leave everything blank. We will come back to this when we're talking about eye gates and actually publishing our information to the internet. But for now, all we want to do is listen for packets that Direwolf is decoding locally on this machine and then just plot it. So let's keep this simple right now and not mess at all with this tab. Um, lastly, I think you can come over here to the miscellaneous tab and you can mess with this. But again, I'm not going to change anything. Let's just leave this as is. OK. All right. So let's hit OK. So um, let me see. Yes. OK. So we get some warnings uh, about this. So right now uh, we are actually not connected to anything. And in fact, let me let me close this direwolf configuration file just so we can just see pinpoint APRS. So again, here's all our pinpoint APRS uh, windows. You come down here and you can see that our terminal node controller is disconnected. And same thing with our APRS um, uh, IS uh, gate for internet connections. So everything is disconnected. So this thing is actually quite boring right now. It's not doing anything. And that's ex to be expected because we don't even have the radio hooked up to the, to the laptop. We don't even have direwolf going on right now. So we need to do some of that. Uh, before we do that, maybe what it might be useful to show is how you can kind of reconfigure this set 
there's these windows if you want. So for example, if you if some of these are closed, if you don't have a communications monitor or you don't have GPS data or you don't have this last heard window, you can easily get that back. If you come up here to the view, you can select and activate all of these different windows up here. So let's just get our GPS window back. Let's get our communications window back. There we go. So now uh, I think we've got everything set up. So the next thing we need to do now is Let's go ahead and fire up Direwolf and start listening for some APRS packets. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've got my uh, APRS packet generator, which is our little payload box here, and you can hear it uh, kind of beeping. So it's setting out packets, and I've got it hooked up to our two radios over here. Oh, um, obviously this radio is just listening, so is that one, but this radio is now hooked into the laptop as we've discussed in the past. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up Firewolf. And we just want to make sure that we're actually getting the packets. So, okay, here we are. Firewolf is up. And let's just see if it's going to get us a packet. There it is. Oh, okay, so let me turn down the, the volume. A little bit too high. But yeah, it looks like we got it. All right, we started the log file. This looks great. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up Pinpoint APRS now. And we'll see if we can use Pinpoint APRS to visualize all of those packets. All right. So here we are. And now we've already set up all of the options as we discussed over here. So all of these should be set up and ready to go. So let's just go ahead and now connect to our TNC. So we've got to come up here to tools and say connect TNC. And there we go. Uh, oops. Uh, oh, well, hold on. Do I, did I need to switch this? Hold on a second. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. I see where the problem was. Okay. For some reason, TNC, did I say, oh gosh, in the early one, I can't remember. Did I say serial kiss TNC? That's not right. I wanted a network kiss, uh, mode. Okay. So now let's set that option and now let's clear this event. And now we should be able to come here to say tools and let's now connect TNC. Okay. TNC is connected. Okay. Now let's see if something pops up around here where when we get our next packet hopefully our balloon should show up when we get our next packet aha look at that there it is it popped up here it is aprs is reports let's see um position reports no sorry where is uh, oh here radio reports let's see physician reports look at that there we are there's our balloon there's my call sign and here it is you can see it I'm sitting here again on the shores of the lay of the of the sound here and yet yeah, it popped up so it is sitting there no problem that is great so it looks like we've got pinpoint APRS basically visualizing the packets that direwolf is decoding and we are now seeing it show up so that is pretty darn great all right, so now that we've got this working locally, let's see if we can get these packets onto the internet. So to do that, let's come up here again to tools, um, options, okay. And it's gonna give us a little warning, but we can skip that warning uh, for now. Okay, APRS-IS. Okay, so in here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we are gonna to have to get an APRS-IS uh, passcode. So to do that, all you need to do is uh, go to Google and type in APRS passcode generator. Then you input your call sign and it will basically return a uh, passcode to you. So I'm gonna put in my passcode now. Uh, Okay, and hit okay. All right, and now what we may want to do is let's, for, for completeness, let's disconnect our TNC just to stop it. Then let's reconnect it just to make sure the settings take effect. And then also we'll now connect APRS.IS. So now hopefully a, uh, Pinpoint APRS will take those packets and not only just display this locally, but it will display it hopefully uh, over the internet. So what we're hoping is then uh, okay, there we go. We got a packet. Okay, and you can see the APRS IS is connected to this server. So good. That is hopefully uploading it to the internet. So now if we come over here, I've got a completely separate machine over here connected to the internet and I've gone here to APRS.FI and look at that. I don't know if you can see this too easily, but let me see if we can zoom in. Um, 
There is our balloon. Oh, where, where did it go? Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in. Oh, there it is. There's our balloon. So we're showing up on APRS.is. So basically anyone on the internet can now see where we are because we are forwarding all those messages from Direwolf to Pinpoint APRS, which is then forwarding it on to the internet via basically this, this eye gate. So this is working great. All right, so there you have it. A pretty simple way to get started using Pinpoint APRS to visualize the location of APRS packets that you might hear either over the air or via your eye gate. So uh, with that being said, I think we've set up quite a bit of nice infrastructure surrounding APRS. As we mentioned in our uh, those previous two videos that we already referenced, we've already now talked about how to build your own DIY APRS packet generator using an Arduino. And then we've also talked about how to decode those packets via Direwolf, and now we've got a nice system to visualize those decoded packets using Pinpoint APRS. So, uh, like I said, it's a nice infrastructure that I think we've got built up around APRS, and now we hope to be able to leverage this for a high altitude weather balloon launch and then be able to track the payload using this system and then visualize where it is on Pinpoint APRS so we can kind of chase the balloon. So, that's the game plan, but obviously you can extend this framework to pretty much lots of different applications. I'll let your imagination kind Kind of take you where it wants to go in this frame so with that being said uh, i think this is probably a great spot to leave it uh, i hope you enjoyed the video and if so i also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button it really does help me continue making these videos um, i hope to have a lot more videos on ham radio arduinos diy that kind of stuff coming out in the future so remember those new videos should come out every monday and i hope we will catch you at one of those future discussions and we can all learn something new together so until then i think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.